Welcome back, Fishings fans. Ready Player Will here. Hope you are all still in the summer mood. It's not too late. It is September, but we do have Summer Glaciella here released this week. This is the character review to go over this, quite frankly, excellent new unit. So today, pretty standard stuff. The character overview, base and total stat analysis. We're going to go through some of the metrics leading up to the report card where we contextualize those stats, thinking about the rest of her kit, what you'll see in practice, give her a grade, which leads to the general thoughts where we kind of talk a little more high level about her character overall. And then we really get to see the specifics going into the passives counters the job abilities and auto priority we'll look at the tmr to review that and then touch upon the job based vision card eligibility some esper synergies and finally the weapon optimization so kicking things off the character of you brand new water unit added to global here they've given her the unique main job of steadfast flower as well as the dragoon and thief sub jobs she does equip swords and she's part of the sword red mage category which excellent excellent new category to be a part of she does equip only hats cloths and accessories with a move of three and a jump of one as a 100 cost unit now my faith recommendation is 50 faith I've heard some people talk about going 97 faith because she does have access to an ailment or two. Theoretically, she might get healed externally, but a lot of her self-healing potentially is just percentage-based, so you don't need that high faith. My personal recommendation is 50, just because magic is one of her weaknesses overall, so I'm not crazy about the idea of 97 faith. Now, from her character kit, max range of 3 only has 1 AoE ability on the main job and 3 single target attacks. From a resistance standpoint, the only negative here is the minus 5% to pierce everything else 25% to slash 20% to strike and 10% to both missile and magic overall really great starting spots for a lot of these resistances although she's got that negative weakness to pierce she's got so much defense enough aoe and unit res that i'm not terribly concerned about the damage done but obviously something to be on the lookout for from an ailment perspective again another reason why i don't want her to be 97 faith if you keep her at 50 you don't have to worry too much about these but she does have natural resistances to poison to stop and 10% to doom could be better could be worse the poison one kind of nice stop one obviously is nice too we do see that a fair amount now the mastery ability they've given her the standard hp and water attack but uniquely they've given her an extra 10 percent hp and 10 unit res obviously very important for tank characters which she is and for the 140 they've given her 15 healing power also gets that five hate to start the battle and the normal skill upgrade now looking at the base stats overall she does have the second highest base hp in the game very very strong starting point here you love to see that in a tank obviously from an attack perspective actually not that bad for a base attack considering she is a tank a lot of these characters tend to skew a little bit lower overall i don't think she's in a bad spot considering her damage profile from an agility perspective basically on the little below average side but that's not the end of the story for many of these characters base agility really doesn't always affect what the end result is but the dexterity and the luck dexterity yeah maybe just a little bit below average here not terribly surprising but the luck is very high at least from a base perspective and so when we kind of transform those five charts into one comparing relative strengths and weaknesses she's top of the chart for hp obviously the rest of them not horrible no necessarily glaring weaknesses at least in my opinion as a tank character when you include the mastery the board notes things of that nature couple changes do happen they don't give her a ton of luck so she does kind of fall back to earth on that stat but overall her agility ends up in a good spot the dexterity is in a relatively okay spot she's not a crit hit unit i wouldn't worry about that and when you're looking at the sources of some of those stats 11 agility points is definitely a little bit above average so nice that they make her recover from that but overall ton of hp here on the left side here from that mastery ability as well so the agility now she does have an agility passive and without it she is rough roughly at that average of 77 with it she gets up to 83 which is not that bad all things considering i wouldn't say it's an amazing agility stat but overall very very happy with it not something you have to worry terribly about from the crit hit and crit avoid again the dexterity stat not very high no crit hit nodes she's not a crit hit unit and the crit avoidance rate although she does have a high base luck the lack of luck on the board does make her fall a little bit down to earth here but that's easily recoverable if you start putting some luck items uh vision cards and whatnot on her now for the accuracy definitely not her strong point down here at 157 percent no accuracy boosting passives either now she does have a guaranteed hit certainly a very important part of the discussion but overall not an accurate unit in the least and even from an evasion perspective despite that high base luck i don't think she actually ends up being very evasive potentially at all i don't think she's on that gradient where you can even have that conversation so i wouldn't even consider her an evade unit now for the report card this is obviously a little hard to judge because a lot of times we look at this through the lens of of dps characters so some of these grades are based on tank comparisons some are based on 
gain comparisons. I'll kind of try to nuance those as we go through them. But effective HP, going with a B plus here, and that's comparing her more toward the tanks. She's actually not the tankiest unit effective HP wise. She does have 14 defense and zero spirit innately. She does also have 15 AOE res innately and 10 unit res. Now she does also get access to 10 element res on her weapon if you meet a certain health pool condition. So there's a couple things here. And as you saw with the resistances, some of them are very strong, but the 25% to slash is easily penetratable. And so that's part of the consideration. So overall effective HP, very strong, not the strongest of the tanks, but still very good. But the survivability gradient, when you talk about, you know, what does your kit actually do to enable her? I'm going with an A plus here. And quite frankly, there's too many to go over on this slide. I have a whole section on the general thoughts in just a couple minutes talking about why this is an A plus grade for survivability overall. Now for damage, I'm going with a B here. And again, this is more for tank uh, comparisons, not overall damage comparisons. She's got no slash res pen innately. She does get 20 on a weapon. Her good attack that she'll spam the most often does allow her another 60 on that uh, cast only. So you're looking at 80 defense pen on that main ability she's going to use. That's a really good thing to start off with. Not going to blow anybody away with damage though, but uh, overall, I think compared to tank, she's in a good spot. Agility wise, going with an average C here, you're at that base of 77 versus 77. Yeah, maybe just a smidge above average when you equip her one passive, but I don't think it's a slam dunk to always have on. I do think there's some competitive options. So overall, I'm going to round down here from C plus to C, which is an average unit. That's totally fine. Now, I can see going with the D minus here, not uh, an accurate unit in the least. Does have that guaranteed hit on the main job, though. An evasion going with a D plus here, not an evade unit, in my opinion, at the least. I don't think there's any chance that ever happens. Now, for movement, I'm going with an A. She does have access to either move plus one or jump plus one as passives have permanently in the battle. Technically, as a buff on the Dragoon sub that does the move one, jump one, but you're not using that in auto PvP, but certainly nice that she does have that for PvE content or manual pvp content now for the auto ease of use you know how easily can you just plug her into a battle and get some good value a exceptionally smart buffs in terms of rotation the ai priorities are excellent in terms of damage and what she chooses to use for attacks super easy value if you're just plug her in to realistically a wide array of teams now the game disruption also going with an A here. She is the best rainbow tank in my opinion, and should enough people pull for her, she could single-handedly usher in a magic meta of sorts. That's how good she is against physical damage, how good she enables her teammates to be against physical damage. Now, I'm not saying that's going to happen, but because obviously we're in a road to worldwide crunch for Vizior and, and what people are building for speeds and planning for and whatnot, but the character is that good that yes, she has a dominant effect in the battlefield and potentially in the game balance as well. Now for the passives, going with an A here, great passives with smart flexibility for what you want to use for certain kind of maps, agility tuning, uh, survivability, you name it, she's got it. The counter ability is also going with an A here, excellent main passive for both the current slash meta and technically to hedge her weakness against the magic, which I I say magic as a weakness it's not technically percentage wise but effectively speaking because of the lack of spirit in my opinion that's the one area that she's kind of exposed but this counter does a lot to really hedge against that potentially should you not have reduced counter chance the overall job and kit going with an a here grossly good utility to teammates and some great extra utility very very smartly designed kit overall like thumbs up on nearly everything for a final grade of an a plus I think she's better than Dialdo and Raph. I think there's a glaring magic weakness if you don't hedge against that, but near perfect tank otherwise. She hits everything down the line for what you want out of your tank, other than maybe the ability to generate more hate. So that is a potential downside if you're not managing your battles right, but her utility to teammates is strong enough that even if you lose hate, it's not the end of the world like it is for some other tanks. Now we look at the general thoughts, expanding upon that A plus on the survivability. There's a superb amount of survivability tools here. You have that 70% chance counter to reduce slash and magic damage by 40%. You have debuff weakening of 30% and more of that on the vision card. And again, for how that works, it reduces the potency of any kind of debuff. So if something's a 38% slash in peril, she will reduce that 38% down significantly, which lessens the damage she takes. She's also got courage ability. She's got a 40% heal back, which is at minimum 52% because of her 140 ability and how healing power affects that. She's got a defense buff herself, but simultaneously a decrease of defense pen 
for enemies. So although defense normally is kind of shruggable, like, oh, it's penetratable, no big deal. The fact that she uses it in conjunction with a decrease of enemy defense penetration makes that a lot stronger. On her limit break, she gets 40 AoE res for two turns. She's also got protect on her second buff, as well as elemental chain res of 80%, which is of a high enough threshold that you'll notice the damage reduction. And again, as mentioned, that weapon gives 10% element res when her HP is above 60%. Overall, up and down, an exceptional amount of tools here for her own survivability. Now, she does have a physical barrier aura. That's kind of the term we're giving it right now for four squares away to teammates that will reduce physical damage by 40% so long as she's alive. Doesn't fade. So as long as the teammates within four squares of her, they'll take 40% less physical damage. It doesn't apply to her, though, only to the teammates. Exceptional ability, though. She's got great extra utility as well with the 40% accuracy to teammates in that same aura. It's accuracy and physical reduction that they both get. 40% accuracy is insanity to give a teammate nearby when you also consider the unit affinity buffs that you get. She can dispel re-raise. Her lowest AP cost ability is a 20 times CT reduction, which is really effectively a 200 CT reduction. So kind of similar like we see with a lot of these units with 200 CT up. She also has access to a physical barrier break. Not going to use it all the time, but it is there. She's a dominant rainbow tank too. Enables a huge variety of teams in the sword red mage category, but also for ice and water in terms of that dual element where they have a stacked amount of chaos vision cards that go very well together as you've seen. So a lot of opportunities outside water, speaking strictly in mono element. The thief sub also has the necessary skills that you like to see on it. She's got both steel time for PVE and steel heart which she may not use in auto PvP all that often, but definitely an important skill to have when you do have a Thief sub job. I do think she has great passives to alter her character build for a variety of maps and metas. As part of an exceptional vision card class that Gumi intentionally seems to be pumping a ton of resources into, and when paired with her own vision card, an excellent additional upside where she's got a strike counter ability access on that vision card, probably not using it a ton, because of what the AI priorities are, but it's there, very cool to use. An additional 25% on the debuff effect weakening, and an additional 10% healing power makes that self heal 60% of her total health pool. Just a crazy amount of healing overall. Now as we get into the passives and the counter abilities and whatnot, Sheik Summer Shade is the must, uh, at least the bare minimum. 30% debuff weakening, five hate, to make it a total of 10. So she'll take five hits before she's out and she cannot regenerate that. It also gets that 15 AoE res. And then after that, I think it's debatable what you would use. I think my gut says Thief Lore for the move one and the agility of 12%. I'd love this ability for tanks overall just to get them that extra speed and get them that extra distance from teammates by being able to move further faster. But I do think Dragoon Lore has a case to be made because of that extra healing power in addition to the HP as well. And obviously jump plus one is certainly nice for certain kinds of maps. Now for the counter abilities, SPF 50. This should be like SPF 100. It blocks everything. I'm kidding. It's an exaggeration, but 70% counter to reduce magic and slash damage by 40% for self. Very, very strong. Not only considering the meta that we're in, but also her weakness of magic considering the lack of spirit that she has. The other ones are fine. Not nearly as good though, obviously. Now for the main job buffs. The one that she prioritizes first is actually the second one here, Unfalling Maiden. That's her Courage ability, but it also is her heal back of 40%, which is technically elevated because of the healing power. And this is that aura we're talking about where you get two other things for teammates. You get a physical damage reduction of 40%, which is non-dispellable, non-breakable. There's no way to get around that. And 40% accuracy as well, so long as she's alive. Wildly good buff here. And the second one also is too. That's that extra protect and the 80 elemental chain res. Both of these together are super strong for where we're seeing the game go from a third anniversary perspective. Now for the main top offense, I actually love what they've done with this. Now, all these abilities are max range of three. You get that one AOE ability and the three unit abilities. They're all water slash types. Overall AP costs, I think these are relatively cheap, all things considered. I think this is pretty decent. Now, going through these one by one, Slight Delight is certainly nice for that late fight when you're running out of AP. 13 AP is very, very cheap, where you have the opportunity to reduce an enemy CT, maybe get it so that your damage dealer next to you can lap them if you're able to switch up that turn order. Very, very strong. Uh, X Factor late in fights. Ebb and Flow Barrier on paper is very, very good. 
It's a physical barrier break, but it also gives her a physical barrier of 70%. I didn't mention that earlier because obviously it's a little conditional and it's actually very conditional. So the only time she'll actually use this ability is if there's only one unit in range and they happen to have a physical barrier on them. If they don't, she will always use woven claws instead because mathematically it's just going to do more damage not only does it give an extra 40 defense pen on that cast as you see but also because you can select up to two targets she'll always maximize the damage if she can hit two people so the only time you're using ebb and flow barrier is if there's only one enemy in range and they have a physical barrier so this one sounds really good it's a little more situational though, but it's a very nice ability when has the opportunity to be used. Now, Wolf and Claws, I just mentioned, this is exceptional. Dispel re raised to two different units potentially. It's also a decrease of defense pen of 30 for three turns, and it increases her defense of 40 for one turn. Very, very strong ability overall. And sure thing, this is her guaranteed hit. It's the only AoE. It's also a 25% chance to inflict stop. Certainly nice, but I don't think that's a major strength here. I really only like this ability for the 100% hit chance. Otherwise, I think Wolven Claws is just better up and down overall. Now for the Limit Break, this is another single target ability up to three squares away, only 43 AP. It's a small attack buff of 40% for that Limit Break only, but gives that AoE res of 40 for two turns. Obviously very, very strong here. The best thing about this ability is that it's also a range of three. And so when you talk about that auto ease of use, this is why this is so great, because she's gonna walk up to someone being only three squares away, she's more than likely going to use both buffs because she won't get baited all that early. But what she does get in range, she will typically use this limit break first unless there's two enemies in range which is fine if there are two enemies in range she'll use wolf and claws which is an equally good ability early in the fight to get that defense and reduce their defense pen and then after that it's really going to be situational for what the enemies have in terms of evasion or how they're grouped what her own ap level is to see what she can use third overall very very smart when you consider all things but for the sub jobs, Steadfast Flower, I actually don't like Graviton Strike. Yes, it's a very high modifier. Yes, it's another AoE. It's technically four squares away, but that's the reason why I don't like it. I see no upside here of giving yourself that extra chance to get baited early instead of using a second buff for something that's only going to give a decreased agility of 20% to that target or targets. I don't think that's strong enough, despite the fact that it's a 200% mod. I don't love this ability. I probably have it off, but Tonic Water is actually really good for second Guild War fights, in my opinion, where if you're running her in a team that doesn't have a dedicated healer on turn one, she'll likely opt to heal herself if she's low health, which with that healing power will be a sizable amount of HP restored. So overall, I think it's an excellent option for Guild Wars in particular. Other than that, I don't think there's a strong case for either Dragoon or Sub. I don't like any of these abilities on the Dragoon because they have cast time on them. Dragon's Can, I think, is redundant with her second buff on her main job. I don't love this. I think they really added the Dragoon job for the passive abilities. The Thief one, even this one, I don't love. It doesn't offer anything she doesn't already have. Sure, maybe the access to Confusion could be an interesting angle if you want to go for that 97 Faith build and have Stop and Confusion, but I don't like that at all. I don't recommend it. I don't think it's nearly as strong as just using the main job. I think this is really more for like PvE potential with that steel time and manual with the steel heart. Because even in auto PvP, she's going to opt for the 100% hit chance if she can't hit that person. So overall, I think that's the way to go. The only thing I could see maybe working with Steelheart is if you're going up against an enemy with a Nullify Sure hit, and if her chance to hit is 0%, she'll likely use Steelheart instead of that because the guaranteed hit is Nullified. So I think that's the one angle to take. That's probably the best non-Guild War subjob to have on, but it's, it's debatable. Now for the TMR review, this TMR is next level exceptional. Number one, it's an accessory. Love to see that. Number two, strong double digit values here for the defense and crit evade, uh, really in line with what you see for those normal stats it's a two-time use i love the shape of this everyone knows i'm a sucker for these giant diamond aoes they're so good for movement for teammate buffs overall but this tmr honestly this is like two in one uh 20 percent fire and water res together already is very strong 20 percent element res is great 25 unit res on addition to that is very very good um we're seeing more and more select two abilities in the game we're seeing a lot of characters skewed toward very high AoE res and a lot of single target attacks being prioritized instead because of it. The fact that you can give this on a buff to anyone in the game now because on a TMR, very, very strong. I love this TMR. It's part of the reason why I think it's such a great character and worth pulling. Now for the job-based vision cards, I'm actually going to defer here to JB79's mastercraft of a vision card tool. Huge shout out and props to JB79 for maintaining this. It's literally a game-changing uh, 
tool to use. I think it's the best thing we have on the market to analyze what jobs have access to. And so Sword Red Mage currently has 13 vision cards to pick from. You've got a couple area res options, no unit res yet, but that's okay. Her being a water unit means she can use the Dark Odin vision card and the regular Odin certainly is serviceable too. Even the agility is missing currently, but you have two different agility cards in the game that are great for rainbow team. So I'm not terribly worried, but you have so much variety here in terms of adding some of that chain res if you wanted, reaction block rate, Sildra has slash res pen for that class. You have a bunch of different resistances to pick from. Pierce res on the Roy Mustang card or Strike res on the Groms card. Overall up and down, there's a ton of vision cards to build out here when you talk about putting her in a team of red mage units. And if you're looking at the selection of people that potentially have access to this, I think it's, there's a lot of solid characters to build around when you talk about needing to make a party of three. Now for the Esper synergies, tanks are always tough because the only thing that matters for Espers on a tank is making sure they are matchup specific for the element res or the weapon res or whatever it is. You're not really looking to maximize damage modifiers. So in terms of recommendations, there is none. It's whatever you're facing and, and just picking good Esper for it. After that, I would emphasize just a little bit of accuracy just to make sure she's not missing any of her basic attacks on just low evade units. And then sure, after that, water attack, human killer, and slash attack. But the two notable Espers, these are not my favorites. But when you consider what Espers hedge against her weaknesses, I actually think Ochu is a good honorable mention because of the 20% lightning res that when you talk about you know, gearing for all kinds of matchups. I love that. In addition to the 15 defense, the 15 slash res, a little bit of crit evade here with that 7%. Yeah, it's a little bit slower at that 11 agility, but lots of tank experts are. I'm not that worried about it. And if you're looking for anti-magic to say, give her a little bit of that extra survivability against those magic teams, I think the best Esper for that's likely the Freezes Esper, but I don't have a strong case for this. It's really just because that 6% magic res, you get that 15 spirit, 15 crit evade, I think it's better than Fenrir or Titan, but I this is like ranked 8 or ninth in my total list of what I'm resoing with her first. It's really just from the magic perspective, because other than that, I think everything else is obviously, like I said, matchup specific. But, you know, two espers I at least wanted to call out for some of her potential weaknesses, which brings us finally to the weapon optimization. Now, the C Deity Sword actually is a very good one here, considering that you get that elemental res of 10% when her HP is above 60%, which it will be for a fair amount of the battle. I love that. You also get that defense pen of 20 and the slash attack 15. Overall, it's got some nice stats on it. I think the assault build is fine. I wouldn't go for the critical personally, but this is a really well-rounded weapon, but maybe not my favorite. It's very, very close with the blood sword. Obviously, very strong attack stat on here. It's really for the absorption of damage dealt that I like, and this is wrongly worded, or it's worded incorrectly, on mode of calc. It doesn't rely on critical hits. You will always absorb 15%. But because of the healing power, this is what I want to go through here. When you talk about min-maxing her healing power, 15 from her 140 ability, 10 from the vision card, 10 from a spirit trust stone set, which I'm using currently on her to give her some extra spirit. There's 10 healing power on that. Another 10 from a healing power trust stone passive. That's 45% healing power in total. What that means is that 15% damage absorption when you multiply it by 1.9, because technically when you're the healer and healee, the healing power is doubled, you'll actually recover 28% of the damage dealt. And if you were to include the Dragoon Lore passive, which has another 20 healing power on it, that would really make it 34% of the damage dealt gets reabsorbed. So I like this sword a lot just for some of that extra self-sustain. I can't say if it's necessarily better or worse than her own Sea Deity sword, but I've been using it so far. I prefer it. But both have, obviously, great pros and cons. And that's the Summer Glass Yellow review in a nutshell. There's a lot to really love here. This is an exceptionally strong character that doesn't have a ton of counterplay, even against the Lightning Element. There are things you can do, obviously, to hedge against some of that matchup. The Water Agility card also has 15% Lightning Res on it. With the impending Alaya meta, uh, she's a strike unit. Obviously, Glaciel has a decent amount of strike res to start out with. And Earth is so strong in the game that I don't think people are going to just blast lightning everywhere, knowing that there's also a ton of counterplay with Earth. So there's such a cool triangle going on right now. And the fact that she fits so well in a bunch of, you know, multi-element teams, just a really great unit, really great investment overall. So that's the review for now. Thanks for watching, everybody. I'll talk to you all soon.